this started. All right, and with that, we'll get started. I'm your host, Dr. Clayton Deegan from NanoView Biosciences, and I couldn't be more excited to share with you today the ExoView R200. This is our introduction webinar for the next generation VV imaging platform, and I'm here live with you. A quick overview of the presentation. We'll start out with a general technology overview. This will cover anything for anyone who isn't familiar with the ExoView platform. How does it work? What does it look like? And then we'll get into the R200 specific capabilities, the new features that are coming with the new system versus the R100, additional detection capabilities. We'll see some example data and we'll go through our more typical user customized assays. And first, let's have a quiz. So we've got a couple of prizes. In each session, we're gonna give away one Echo Dot and one Tile Mate to a participant who answers all four of the poll questions. The two that pertain to the new R200 system are pretty easy, and then two are just about you. So we'll go with the first one right now, and with everyone here, we're wondering where are you here from? So I'll leave this up for about 30 seconds so everyone can take a second to answer, say where you're from, what your profession is. We appreciate that. And this will be the first poll that contributes to the prizes we're giving away. And then a single Nintendo Switch will be given away after the conclusion of the second webinar in the America's Time later today. So we're about halfway there right now. Thank you everyone for your participation. Thirds of the way, I'll give it another 15 to 30 seconds if you wanna get an answer in there. It's the first poll question. Where are you from? We've got a good mix here. Be two thirds from academia with a PI group leaders, postdocs and grad students and the other half from industry. Very nice, all right. 10 seconds to go on this uh, poll question here. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. And with that, let's get right into it. So the ExoView workflow advantage overall, when we have a sample, be it cell culture media, plasma, serum, urine, the sample laden with EVs, in most cases right now, we start with a particle enrichment step and we go through some procedure to try and enrich those EVs or isolate them from the matrix that they're in, in the whole sample. And that could concern ultracentrifugation, that can concern a size exclusion chromatography step, precipitation, all of those methodologies are in fact compatible with ExoView. So you can see the arrow goes down from the particle enrichment step straight into the ExoView capture chip. And we show our little diagram there of the liquid suspended over a chip where the particles are interacting with the capture spots. And then an actual picture of the chip, which is about a centimeter by a centimeter. And we're gonna see in practical use on the next slide. And this provides single vesicle analysis for size and biomarkers, which we're gonna see some vivid examples of today. And it requires a very small amount of the sample from really anywhere in the process, you can use the particle enriched isolates, or you can use the whole sample with the cell culture media, serum, urine, saliva, et cetera. You don't need to do the particle enrichment. And second, when you bring together the data from the ExoView chip, you no longer have the disconnect between particle size and concentration, the determination of the number of nanoparticles in the sample, and then separately determination that there are EV biomarkers present in the sample also as a separate technique and then trying to mesh those by assumption. Now we're gonna directly detect single EVs on the immunocapture chip and then additionally markers that those are also positive for right on the chip. So that looks like this in practice. We have our cartoon chip on the left where the anti-tetraspanin antibodies are arrayed in individual rows with repeated spots. So as we draw it there, the anti-CD81 row at the top means that the CD81 row is gonna capture during the incubation stage, just those particles which are positive for CD81. And the incubation stage looks just like we're gonna see in this little video here, a single chip. We wouldn't always do it on top of the pen cap here, but we drop the liquid on for the incubation. And during the incubation, we see the first part of this reaction take place where down on the spots, the particles that are positive for the corresponding marker are going to stick to the spot during the incubation stage. And now under the liquid, looks something like this. We see our capture spot, our activated area with the antibody capture. And over time, we see the little EV showing up all over the spot. 
And when we stain them, so we've got our fluorescent antibodies showing in the little diagram over there, and that's the staining step the next day. We come in with multiple fluorescent antibodies and then read out not just the size and position of the EVs that have been captured, but their corresponding biomarkers and the, the phenotypes they take on. And this, of course, is highly related to what we're here to talk about with the R200 today. But the overarching workflow, whether you have an R100, like a pictured here with a couple of its features, or an R200, the workflow is the same. The geometry on the little chip has been optimized to eliminate spot-to-spot -spot competition. So our spot replicates probe separate sets of particles. And then we have about 40 microliters of sample during our incubation stage, and that's often diluted. So that's not requiring uh, 40 whole microliters of sample. Most of the time, that's gonna be a microliter or two of sample in the incubation solution. And then the sample's washed, stained, and read by the automated reader. So all the data gathering is completely automated. And a lot of the sample types, like we mentioned, don't require much more purification. So you do an incubation, a wash and a stain, and then in any XOVU application, whether you're using R100 or 200, the reading's automated and you gather the data. And this assay and data gathering are de-skilled and user-friendly. And we're gonna dive in now to see what some of that data can look like on the R200, the next generation of EV analysis. So this is the R200 reader. There's two models available, the R200 and the R200 plus. Both are gonna come with the increased throughput features. So that's mainly centered around the 16 chip chuck. So we just saw in the R100, you could read nine chips at one time. Uh, we see in our chuck here, we have room to read 16 chips in one scan. So you can read twice as many chips in a scan. The stage and operational design has some increased speed to it. So we expect about 25% faster scan times for higher throughput and improved scanning UI. If you're a current R100 user, um, some of the features are pretty nifty. The stage automatically detects the presence of the chuck. So when you set the chuck on, if you've requested that the reader scan, it will automatically take the chuck inside, begin its scan and put it back out. This can be useful for remote operation too. You can load the chuck all the way up and then uh, initiate multiple scans remotely. In the R200 Plus, we have some really cool features that we're gonna check out in the data here, mainly the fourth fluorescent detection channel. So yes, the R200 is coming with a fourth fluorescent color, which means you can do five marker co-localization on single EVs, which we're gonna see an example of coming up here. This laser is at 750 excitation. And it, so it adds a far red detection channel beyond our standard red channel that excites at 647. Larger particle sizing is also in the 200 plus. So using the farther lasers to perform the same type of single particle interferometry that we do in the R100, but at bigger sizes using the longer laser wavelengths. Now, a couple features that are coming for everyone, whether you're an R100 owner, potential R200 owner, near complete automation. We'll see on the next slide a picture of the chip washer. The XOVU chip washer is completely removing the human element from this asset. So now you can have confidence that no matter who's processed the chips, including the incubation, staining, and drying steps, there's no human element to the variants anymore. The loading step, you blot the sample on, all the washing, staining, drying aspects are handled by the chip washer. And then all the data gathering is completely automated in the R100, 200, or 200 plus. And concentration features, new software features that are gonna work for everyone to enhance the conversion of the chip measurement to the corresponding particles per mil number. So with the chip washer here, we see the chip washer 100, the R200 platform, you can really achieve near complete automation of these EV characterization assays, wherein you take the sample and someone only needs to be able to load the sample onto a chip. The rest of the procedure, as far as preparing the chip and gathering the data from it, can be moved to other than moving the chip around physically into the chuck and into the scanner and setting up the scan, you can achieve no human element to any part of the XOVU assay. Oh, wrong one. Quiz time. Poll number two here. So hope you were paying attention to the new R200 and R200 plus models. So question one, this is a multiple choice question you need to mark two answers to, and it's launched.
Okay, can see a lot of answers coming in here. We'll give this about the same amount of time a minute. All the way there, over 50%, over 60%. Thank you, everybody. Looking good. We've got about 20 seconds left on the poll here if you want to get your answer in regarding the two new models of the XOVR 200. The differentiating features for the second model being the fourth laser channel, larger particle sizing. All right, five, four, three, two, one, and that poll's closed down. Here we go. Hopefully, you paid attention. The R200 and the R200 Plus are the two models available. So, we're through our quiz there. So, let's get into the meat of what we want to look at with the R200, which is really the enhanced five biomarker co localization, the ability to use this far red channel to again expand our view of what the phenotypes of these EVs that we can collect are. And so we have our blue, green, and red channels. These are the same uh, laser wavelengths that come in the R100. They're the same sensitivity as the R100. The addition of the fourth channel allows for the five biomarker co-localization where you have the capture antibody. So we've drawn that one down on the bottom side of our little captured EV there. And then we've labeled with four different colors on top of that same EV that's been captured. So we have our capture antibody is biomarker one. And then we've got four additional antibodies that we can use to define what the phenotype of the EV is. So let's get an example, but basic stuff is, can we, can we extend our usual bead data into the NIR range? These look comparable and sure enough, they do. We can see on the top left chart, we've got our normal single particle interferometry size distribution detection. We see a nice peak at 100. 25 nanometers, right at the mode of that distribution, we can see these, these beads have a, an aggregate tail, and we're going to find out that that is a real aggregate tail where the intensity of the particles is, is increasing out there. Directly below that, we see our first view of the fluorescent detection in the NIR and the green, blue, and red channels, where we've got our uh, peach spray of fluorescent-only particles on the right. So this takes into account only that the beads are fluorescent in each of the individual color channels. And then above that, we've measured their size. And in the top right, we then mesh the size. So the size is on the x-axis on the bottom against then the individual intensity in each of the channels for that particular particle. And we see a really nice correlation between the size that's determined for the particle, even over the peak of the distribution across that Gaussian area around 120, we see a nice correlation between the determined particle size by the interferometry and its corresponding intensity in each of the single color channels. And then our final verification of the operation of the system here is that, in fact, for every one of these beads virtually, the phenotype is positive for all the colors and size. So we see this white circle in the co-localization analysis for the pie chart. And I want to take a, take a second to absorb that the list of colors we could see in that pie chart is quite long. We could see any combination of our four potential dyes, and that when we ask of all the events that are detected and shown in the spray charts left, and above with the size, what's the only actual co-localization phenotype of the beads? It's of course, only that they're positive for all four markers down at the bottom, the red RGB slash NIR being the white fill in the pie. Try and keep that in mind as we step into the next two slides because they're a little dense in data, but very revealing in what you can learn about the sample using the R200. So let's put this capability, this ability to add a, a fourth fluorescent channel to use by adding anti-centenin-1, our normal cargo protocol staining antibody, into our normal tetraspanin assay without now needing to remove one of our tetraspanin stains. So we're going to use our normal tetraspanin chip here, with our anti-CD8163 and 9 in our control. And then on our staining side, instead of just having... CD9, CD81, and CD63, we're actually going to perform the cargo protocol, and we're going to bring in the anti-centenin in the red, or R channel here, and we're going to move our CD63 tetraspanin response into the far red channel, as I've noted below there. So we're going to see 
CD9, 81, and 63. And then the red, we'll see SIN10 and 1 for internal staining. In the same EVs that we're going to see permeabilized and non-permeabilized, we're going to see this anti syn 10 and 1. So after EV capture, the antibody cocktail is CD9, CD63, CD81, and anti syn 10 for our four-color imaging. This four-color sequential imaging has about single binding sensitivity, revealing all the small EVs captured on the chip, and the interferometric data calls out their size. The data that we report per binding spot quantifies the number of EVs bound, their size, and their phenotype. So here, let's venture in and see what this fourth color dimension adds to our thought about a very typical sample, some standard HEK-derived EVs. And this is, we, we wanted to look at the, the pie on the other one, and what do we see right away? Uh, the white part of the pie, where our beads were all positive for all four markers, has become significantly smaller here. And in fact, the top line is when we don't do the permeabilization protocol. So in this one, we can't expect very many to be positive for all the markers or positive for red at all because the centenin shouldn't stain in the top row. And sure enough, it doesn't. If we look, if we look down the types of, of colors we would see for red, we'd see solid red. We'd see some mix of yellow, teal, and pink. And then this set of kind of olive, maroon, and gold. And those are the colors exactly that are missing from the top chart where we see instead on our CD63 capture pad, we see a very strong 81 and CD9 staining response in the teal and a very strong 81, 9, and 63 staining, GB and IR in this darker gray. So we actually find out that in fact, these particles are strongly staining for all three markers. And that's the common tetraspan and fingerprint for the HEK derived EVs. And we even see on the CD9 pad, we see this subtle shift. But if we think about it, the change we're actually seeing on the CD9 capture is really that the CD9 epitopes are somewhat low on the particles. So when we gather them on the CD9, we can't stain the CD9, can't stain the blue channel very well, but we actually stain almost all the particles for CD63 and CD81. And their co-localization thereof is quite strong, indicating that there's a major family of triple positive particles that can be defined by this. And what we would wanna know when we add the fourth channel is, are all those particles closed and do they contain the common EV markers in 10 and one on the inside of them? And when we perform our permeabilization assay and we look down the, the row below, we see about the same number of total particles analyzed. We see 2,800, 5,400, 3,000, 5,400, 2,700 on CD9 in the non-perm, 3,100 after perm. And the difference there is all the particles that we've stained for centenin, but we notice a big expansion in the yellow slice of the pie that wasn't present before. Virtually all the centenin signal is falling inside of the other tetraspanin signal. We find that it's inside 80% of the particles on either spot. We actually get only 10% of the actual centenin signal shows up somewhere that didn't already have a tetraspanin signal present. So in these HEK derived EVs, we confirm their phenotype further not only are they positive for all three of the tetraspanins primarily, but most of the particles actually also contain centenin too. And we're able to realize that as this, really this three quarters of the pie on the CD63 that we see start at the white slice, sweep out the olive and light gray slice and the yellow slice. Those combine to form this quadruple positive phenotype of captured on a tetra, stained for centenin one, CD63, CD81, and CD9 in some form, and enhance our view of this HEK derived EVs as actually being closed EVs that virtually all contain a combination of the three tetras and centenin in almost every particle. So a really cool result and a really good use of adding in the fourth channel without giving up any of the staining in the original channel and learning something uh, very interesting and completely new about the particles that we've captured here by implementing a simple protocol with the cargo protocol that's already built in and adding in just that centenin stain in an additional channel. The workup and analysis doesn't feel any different than a typical Exovio experiment. So quiz time. Our new fluorescent channel, the far red. What is the additional color included with the Exovio R200 plus? So we have our three standard channels in the 100 Two, and all 200 models. And then we have an additional channel that's available in the R200 plus, which one is it?
And this will be the third poll question that you need to answer to be in the mix to get some of those nice prizes that we're going to give away. This one we're getting some very high marks on. Do it about another 30 seconds or 60% of the way there. And I uh, do see a couple of questions building up in the Q&A. Anything that comes up, just leave in there. We'll hit a question slide at the end and go through that. Give this about 20 seconds. Thank you for your time and attention there. All right, and five, four, three, two, one. Last second answers and down it goes. Thank you all for your participation there. So now let's talk, we've, we've kind of covered the features of the R200. What isn't different between the R200 and the 100 is the structure of the XW chips and your ability to multiplex different markers together on the chips. The chips are the same for both. The only difference between the 100 and the 200 capability for this assay would be number five or the maroon antibody. The far red antibody can only be read in the R200 plus. Everything else about this assay and diagram is totally applicable to the 100 and 200 platforms with the red, green, blue channels and the same chip structure. So five biomarkers can be co-localized using our new R200 plus. We have marker one is the one down on the chip. So then we have different rows. Here we have six different custom antibody captures. You do, we have the ability to print these chips with custom markers of your choice. We have a couple other kit formats out of the box that I'll talk about in the next couple of slides. But the four fluorescent markers, so these are common across all the captures, are gonna be two, three, and four, and five, these colored antibodies. The six different captures could be standard, could be custom, but that combination, six captures, four stains, gives you the ability in one chip to probe up to 10 different protein combinations, phenotypes, maybe different particles that are present all on the same chip. And this can be done with the customs, or as we're gonna see on the side, we've got a couple different arrays that are already pre-made for you. One's the cargo kit, which we already utilized right up the bat. Any of our kits, regardless of tetraspanin structure, plasma, cargo assay, can, can be added on to any kit to enable the ability to see if the EVs are closed on the chip. We see in the no perm and perm here, uh, perm on the top, and we see the red signal come through. That's the sentence thing, so we can see it right away. The green looks bright on the bottom, and then we see a lot of this red come in and turn it yellow when we actually open these using the cargo protocol. And when we don't open them, we convincingly don't stain them, indicating that they're closed. And we see that change numerically in the bottom by the growth in the red bar for this antenna channel. So we capture these EVs by the normal antibodies. And then this reagent kit with the sensitendin stain can be added onto any type of kit. Mouse specific assays, we have our XOV tetraspan and mouse chips, just like our human chips, but we don't have mouse CD63 down for capture. Now, what people really like about the mouse chips is that they work from low sample volume. So you can have urine, plasma, things that are hard to get from mice in high volumes. We A lot of these require less than five microliters, that type of starting material. Works direct from the plasma, urine, or other samples, so you don't need to purify from those small volumes. And just to note, there's no mouse CD63 present on the chip right now for the capture side, but we do include it in the staining in the red. And then we have our ExoFlex, which are an extension of our custom assays or what we think of as universal chips. These chips come either with or without the tetraspanins, and they come with two open spaces on the chip that are pre-functionalized to let you decide what antibody is there. So ExoFlex A and B are printed, and your pink antibody, this any custom capture or fluorescent antibody that you use, you would get unconjugated and then attach the linker that corresponds to A or B with the reagents in the kit, then place the linker conjugated antibody onto the spot with a simple incubation and wash. And then in this case, we've activated ExoFlex A against the pink antibody, and then particles will come down and bind to ExoFlex A that are positive for the pink antibody. And then we can stain them just like normal. So with the ExoFlex chip, you can basically go from a blank chip to having a customized chip, and we can provide that alongside the tetraspanins, like we show in the diagram at the bottom, or alone with just the flex spots on the chip. And what does that really open up to? It gives you the opportunity to probe for particles 
that may not co-localize the tetraspanins with a marker of interest. So when we capture on the tetraspanin spots to the right, we're requiring that our secondary markers in the blue, green, and red detection channels co-localize to the tetraspanin molecule we've captured the particle based on. And the exoflex A and B let you instead capture on the display of a different marker that then removes the requirement for the tetraspanin to co-localize. And in all other aspects, functions the same as the tetraspanin spots. So with these, you can work up what antibody would work well for your custom assay using the flex kit. And then you can move forward in the future with ordering those custom chips for whichever ExoView platform you're looking to use. And with that, we'll keep this webinar fairly brief and head into some questions. We'll see what we've got up here in the, in the chat and the Q&A. We've got an, an easy one. So Ness, is it possible to add the NIR channel to the ExoView R100? That is not um, going to be possible to add the channel to the old one. However, if you get an ExoView R200 base, it will be possible to upgrade that to an R200 plus featuring the channel in the future if you didn't get it at the outset. So not on the 100, but is possible to upgrade your 200. A good review question here, what are the major differences between the R100 and the R200? As we said, in the green, blue, red, and standard IM operation, the 50 to 200 nanometer range, they should perform basically identically. And the big extension is in the R200 plus getting the larger particle sizing, the fourth laser channel, and then for both the 200 and 200 plus, you're going to see increased scan, decreased scan times, increased efficiency, decreased scan times, the 16 chip chuck, which is lets you scan more at the same time, and all the nice UI features. The software for analysis is actually going to be the same for both systems. And with that, I think we've got one more poll to do here. While we're going through this, if you're interested in learning more about the R200, how to bring it to your lab. If you have an R100 and you'd like to see what the fourth laser channel can add for you, we're happy to do uh, a demonstration for you. We're happy to have you send samples into us and get some analysis. All of these are the ways that people find out what value X of you can bring to their lab. So with that, I'm gonna ask the final poll question, a critical one to give an answer to here. And that's how should we follow up with you from this webinar? Discuss a personal demonstration, discuss your application, send some more technical information about some of these detection features we've talked about, keeping updated with future webinars because you'd like to see me again, get back online, see something else, or no follow-up needed this time. Absolutely fine too. Um, pop an answer in here. This is the last poll you need to participate in. As far as the prize announcements, uh, we will conclude the next session tomorrow. We'll go through the reports, we'll draw the winners, and you'll be contacted through the same email that you registered under. So make sure to finish up this poll. Tell us how you'd like to meet. Happy to set up what demonstration can be us coming out to you, showing you the R200 in the chip washer, or you sending some samples into our applications lab and us meeting virtually to go over the data as a start to that process. So um, thank you very much for everyone for your time. We're into our five second countdown for the final poll here. And we'll end it. Thank you very much for your attention this morning. Contact us directly to reach your regional representative. I know you're all overseas. It's very early in the morning for me here in California, but nanoviewbio.com, our number plus one, 781-365-8439, or info at nanoviewbio.com are all really easy ways to get in touch with us. The website has obvious contact forms. Please reach out. Oh, we might have one more question. We even know. Let's see. Um, We've got two. Um, and a question about overseas sample shipping. Yes, we operate out of the UK and the US, so we'll we can arrange with uh, the overseas sample shipping. Um, we'll reach out to you. We'll, if you answered that poll in a way that requests outreach, we will definitely get in touch with you and take care of that. And then a second question: What concentration of the custom antibody is required? Probably referring to the Exoflex kits, but for both the flex or the custom kits, uh, whether you're having them printed by us or doing the flex reaction. That reaction calls for 100 micrograms of, of antibody when it starts. A question, do we have a distributor in Turkey? That is a good question. Um, we'll save that. I am not sure off the top of my head if we 
don't, I will connect you with our uh, folks in the UK who can definitely get you a good answer and figure out how to how to get the technology into your hands. How long does it take to complete an analysis? Easy rule of thumb, if you're if you're estimating. So with the chip washer, it can handle up to 24 samples in the processing without a big change in how long it takes it to go through that. So loading them is trivial, takes a matter of minutes if you have a plan. The next day on the wash day and read side, the chip washer will automate up to 24 samples to be done in about two and a half hours. And then the reading depends on the chip size. And you can estimate that per spot, it takes about 45 seconds per spot to gather the data on the chip. So a, a 10 spot chip would take 450 seconds, which is something on the order of eight to 10 minutes, and then times the number of chips you're gonna read. But all of that part goes on automatically. So if we load 16 chips in the chuck and we hit scan, it's gonna say, come back in four hours. I cut up a more, Does is the sample, or is the R200 compatible with tissue samples or such as brain tissue after homogenization? Yes. We have plenty of people who work with tissue samples that have been digested, organoid samples, small volume culture. Yes, and then is the chip washer purchased done separately? The chip washer is a separate apparatus so that anyone who currently has an R100, currently has an R200, you can add on the chip washer. It's compatible with both, doesn't connect to the computer. It's all an onboard chip washing station. So any anyone who's a current user, you can definitely add the chip washer on completely separately. Thank you for the engaging discussion there. Uh, is there a sterilization step in the instrument after use? No, so it in this configuration, you can see that the chips and the chuck are dry. So they're dried and then there's no physical contact between the chips themselves and the instrumentation inside. So it doesn't, we don't have a sterilization step after this. If it was necessary due to the nature of the samples, I'm sure we could develop a protocol that would meet the needs of, of your users there. All right, yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone for the, the lively Q&A there at the end. And um, like we said, nanoviewbio.com, you can register, get in touch with us. If you've answered that poll, with the way you'd like to be contacted, you will definitely hear from your regional representative directly. So with that, I think we'll sign off for this session. We'll be back at it again tomorrow. Good morning, my time. Don't share. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone.